Good morning and greetings from the First Presbyterian Church in Tuscaloosa. I am Michael Bailey, pastor here at the church, and we want to welcome you to this service of worship. We hope that it will not only be glorifying to God, but also a blessing to you. Please know that we would love for you to visit with us whenever you are able here in Tuscaloosa, but also know how glad we are that you are joining with us today in spirit. Our service is already underway, so let us now worship God.
Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church. We're so glad to see every one of you here this morning. We welcome uh, visitors and members alike and those joining us by television or live stream. Glad that you could be with us as we gather together to worship God this morning. Please take the friendship pad located in the pew closest to the center aisle. Take it, fill out the information that it requests and pass it down. Then when it reaches the end, you can pass it back and note those who are worshiping with you and greet them uh, by name. We would also like to give a special welcome to our college students. We are glad that you are here. And if you have not yet connected with our campus ministry called UKirk, we would love to connect you. Lauren Howard is in the back here. She is our campus minister. But this is the college section and if you would ever like to sit with them, please just sit in that zip code right there. Uh, we want to make sure that we connect with you college students. We are glad that you are here. Also, um, there is going to be, be a prospective members luncheon today after church in the chapel reception hall. Go down the stairs and across the building, and it's behind the chapel uh, we had two people that canceled, couldn't come, so we've got lunch for two. So if you want to come, two more are welcome. I'll give up my lunch. Three are welcome. I bet someone else would share. So if you want to come to that, please do right after church today. Youth group meets tonight at 5 p.m. It is inflatable night, so that great night to invite a friend to church. Don't forget to register for Logos, our a uh, fantastic Wednesday afternoon children's program. Uh, registration is online, and you can register today. Uh, with all the events and programs that are going on and coming back online, I encourage you to stay informed by reading the weekly e-blast newsletter or follow us on social media, or you have the announcements there in your bulletin today. In that e-blast, you will find details about the Faith, Hope, and Love book club, which is forming, also volunteering with Reading Allies, which is an incredible program in which volunteers are sent to a, a local elementary school and read with a child each week. It is so important for the child, so important for our community, so volunteer with Reading Allies. The church picnic is coming up on September the 15th, and there is also a gentle reminder in our e-blast about catching up on our giving. We have fallen behind in giving this summer. That is not terribly unusual, but we do need to catch up as we are able. So thank you for your attention to that. Lots of other information weekly sent out. So get informed so that you can get involved. Well, this Sunday we celebrate and give thanks for the connections that we are so blessed by in the church, the connections, the relationships that sustain us, that encourage us, that uplift us, both those uh, connections with God and with each other as members of the household of faith. We recognize and give thanks for all the volunteers and staff who help nurture those connections by contributing their time and talents to worship activities and also fellowship activities those who are up front for all to see and those who play those crucial roles behind the scenes. So today we give thanks for singers and ringers and players, for acolytes and liturgists and greeters, for decorators, for those who serve food and serve drinks, those who set up tables and chairs and clean them up, clean them up afterwards, committee members, staff members, volunteers of every kind. Uh, we couldn't enjoy these blessings without you. So if you do any of those jobs, will you please stand or raise your hand where you are so we can applaud you right now? Nice to have the choir back today. Thank you for your service. And thanks be to God for all the connections that we are so blessed to enjoy here at First Presbyterian Church. Friends, let us worship God.
call to worship printed in your bulletin. Today we celebrate the connections God faithfully gives between brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Living God, in every choice we make, no matter how large or how small, we seek to serve you. We give thanks for those who serve you in the world and in this congregation. Particularly this day, we give thanks for those who help us connect through worship. Musicians and singers, ushers and greeters, acolytes and Bible readers, Likewise, we thank those who create space for us to connect with one another, for those who plan, organize, and volunteer at church events, from lemonade on the lawn and ice cream sundays to Easter egg hunts and church picnic. May we all continue to honor God as we serve God with our lives through Christ our Savior. Amen. The grace of God overflows for us through Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save sinners. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin using the printed prayer of confession followed by individual silent confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, by grace you have chosen us to be your people to dwell with us, and to be at work in and through our lives. We confess that we have not always chosen you back. We have forgotten your faithfulness, 
ignored your word, bowed to false idols, and chosen selfish concerns over others. Forgive our foolish and forgetful ways, God. Remind us of all you have done in our lives, and then help us to choose wisely who we will serve each day. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the promise of our faith is that whoever turns to Jesus Christ will never hunger for forgiveness and the love God offers the world. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Just as Christ welcomed everyone, the outsider, the neighbor, and the friend, let us share a sign of God's peace and forgiveness. So as the children come forward for the word for the children, let us welcome one another as we say, the peace of Christ be with you. Good morning to you all. Have you ever had to say goodbye to someone who was really important to you? You know, maybe it was the school teacher or the preschool teacher from last year that you had to say goodbye to. Or maybe it was to a friend who was moving to a new place. Or maybe it was a family member who, who was older or ill and who you knew would not live much longer. You know, that was the situation with Joshua. And Joshua, who will be in our Old Testament reading today, was a leader. He was a leader of God's people. And he knew that he was not going to live much longer. So he called all God's people together because he wanted to say goodbye. I said he was a leader. He was a good leader. And what made him a good leader of God's people? What made him a good leader? He trusted in God. He trusted in God, exactly. He prayed to God and the direction that he either heard or felt in his heart, that's how he led God's people. And he also communicated that to God's people to say, Here's God's plan, and this is how we're going to follow it. So he was a good leader who trusted in God. So when Joshua called all the people together to say goodbye, he said, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember how God has always been with us. When we were enslaved in Egypt, he brought us out. When we were in the wilderness, God led us, gave us manna, food to eat, and water to drink. And then he gave us new homes in the promised land. 
He said, I hope that you will continue to honor God and to ask to trust God and to ask God for direction in your lives. And he said, now you have a choice. You get to choose each and every day if you will continue to serve and follow God. Joshua said, I know for the remaining of my days, I will always choose to trust and follow God. You know, we each get to choose every day if we will choose God, choose to follow God. Sometimes those choices are big choices. Like if you're older and haven't been baptized, you get to choose to say, I know that God saved me and I want to accept that, be a part of God's people. Also, maybe it's when you go to confirmation as a teenager, will you get to say again, yes, I affirm God's love for me and what God, that God chose me in, in baptism. But there are also little choices that you get to make each day that support those big choices that when you have said, I am part of God's family. Those little choices are things like maybe choosing to be a friend to someone who's an outsider in school or new at school. Maybe those little choices are just saying a kind word. Do you like to hear a kind word when things are going down? Isn't it kind of nice when somebody does that? Yeah. Or maybe... A little choice of trusting and following God is being a peacemaker among your friends or among your brothers and sisters. It's not always easy, but sometimes it's good to be a peacemaker. So these are all little choices that we make every day where we choose God and so that we also choose God through the big choices, through giving of our life. Will you repeat after me as we pray together? Dear God, we love you. Dear God, we love you. Thank you for leading our lives. Thank you for leading our lives. Help us to always choose you. Help us to always choose you. In the big choices. In the big choices. And the little choices. And the little choices. Amen. Amen. Now listen carefully because we're going to do it a little bit different. If you are a fourth or fifth grade acolyte, stick right up here for the acolyte commissioning. Everyone else is invited to grab a worship bag and head back to your seats. Okay. Six, and seventh grade acolytes, please come forward and stand on this bottom step. We are going to have a special blessing for our acolytes today. These are our acolytes who are choosing this ministry. It's a special ministry. Our, the, in the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Every Christian... Look at this great group, y'all. Every Christian, by virtue of being claimed in baptism as a disciple of Jesus Christ, has a ministry to perform in Christ's name. Our fourth through seventh grade graders are invited to join in the ministry of the church by serving as an acolyte. As the acolytes process down the aisle at the beginning of worship, they remind us that Jesus is with us when we worship. Acolytes remind us that Jesus sends us out into the world to carry the light and point to Christ throughout the week. This act of worship leadership enriches our worship experience and is an embodiment of discipleship. Acolytes, I have a question for you. Do you welcome the responsibility of this service because you are determined to follow Jesus in his call to be a disciple? If you do, say, I do. I do. Congregation, church, 
Do you confirm the call of God on these acolytes? And will you encourage them in their call and service to the church? If you do, please say, we do. do. On behalf of First Presbyterian Church of Tuscaloosa, I would like to thank each and every one of you for serving as an acolyte. As you serve, may you serve faithfully. As you respond to Jesus' call to discipleship, may you encourage one another in discipleship. As you symbolically bring the light of Christ into and out of the sanctuary, may you also be be reminded of the light of the world, Jesus. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for sending Jesus to us to be the light of the world. As we see the candles lit each Sunday, may it remind us of your light. Encourage and empower all of us to carry your light with us as we live each day. Amen. Acolytes, you are now commissioned by this congregation to serve as acolytes. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Amen. Thank you, acolytes. Let us pray. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is Joshua 24, 1 through 2a, and then continuing on through 14 through 18. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight he protected us along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed and the Lord drove out before us all the peoples the Amorites who lived in the land therefore we will also serve the Lord for he is our God this is the word of the Lord Choices. It has been said of choices, you are free to make whatever choice you want, but you are not free from the consequences of that choice. Here's another. Decision making is easy when your values are clear. I like what Nelson Mandela once said, may your choices reflect your hopes and not your fears. In the funny but true category, the good news about bad choices is that they make the best stories. And somewhat related, everything happens for a reason. 
But sometimes the reason is you're stupid and make bad choices. There is also a great quote about choices in today's scripture lesson, one that I hope that we all take to heart. Today we are concluding our three-week look at stories from the book of Joshua. The first week we heard the monumental, daunting task that Joshua had in leading Israel into the promised land. But God promised Joshua, I will be with you. And that promise brought courage and strength. And with that courage and strength, we heard last week how Joshua began putting that whole operation into motion. And that began with sending spies into Jericho. And those spies were aided by a rather intriguing character, Rahab, who, as it turned out, was a bold, courageous, intelligent, shrewd woman who history would judge to be a hero of the faith. This week, we skip all the way to the final chapter of the book of Joshua to the end of his life and the completion of Israel's journey into the promised land. Along the way, more intriguing things have occurred. In the first half of the book of Joshua is recorded the miraculous crossing of the Jordan River in which the waters of the Jordan River actually stopped, stopped flowing so that people could safely cross the river. There's also the famed story of the walls of Jericho that came a-tumbling down. In another incident, Joshua prayed and the Lord held the sun in the sky, delayed the sun going down so that the Israelites could finish a battle. And with God's presence and the courage and strength it brought, Israel took possession of the land in less time and with fewer losses than they originally had feared. The second half of the book of Joshua records the allotment of the various territories to each of the 12 tribes of Israel. So as chapter 24 of Joshua begins, all of the tribes now have their assignments. They have their land, their territories. All they have to do, they they know where they're going to live. All they have to do is live, to live happily ever after. That's all they have left to do. But before they do, Joshua has one more word of instruction for them. So he calls the elders and the leaders of all the tribes together and gives them this word. At first, in the verses we did not hear this morning, Joshua reviews Israel's history going all the way back to Abraham and Sarah. Remember, Abraham was the one that God made covenant with. God promised to make Abraham and Sarah descendants of a great nation, that that their descendants would be a great nation with land, a promised land, one that would flow with milk and honey. Joshua reminds the elders of how faithful God had been throughout the long and sometimes wild journey it had been from that promise all the way to the promised land. Joshua recalls how God was at work in and through Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and his brothers as they made their way down to Egypt and how Moses led them to freedom through the Red Sea and into the wilderness where they wandered for 40 years. And Joshua reminded them that even when it was difficult, very difficult, God was with them, delivering them, encouraging them, supporting them, helping them, leading and guiding them all along the way, guiding them to this place, this promised land. So as our lesson begins, Israel has arrived. They no no longer need to call it the promised land. They can now call it the realized land because they are there. They have arrived. And so it is a natural time to pause and reflect with gratitude upon God's faithfulness throughout the long and wild ride that God had carried them on 
that God had gotten them through. Do we do that? Do we pause and recount the faithfulness of God throughout our lives and throughout the lives of our people? Do we look back and remember how God was with us and how God got us through this scare and this scrape? How God sent an angel to help us through this crisis and how God sent a friend to hold our hands through that one? How God gave us joy in the triumphs along the way and helped us find contentment through the simple things. And now granted, we haven't all survived a heart attack. We haven't all been delivered from addiction. We haven't all been saved from a bully. We haven't all been rescued from financial ruin. Nor have we all heard the pitter-patter of little feet. We haven't all experienced a candlelight Friday night service at Montreat Youth Conference. We haven't all experienced the tremendous feeling of weight being lifted when we heard these words, benign, or all clear, or not guilty. We haven't all heard those words But collectively, we have. As a community of faith, we have. As a church, I assure you, we have heard those things. We have seen those things. And having heard those things and seen those things and now recalling those things, how can we not say God is good all the time and all the time God is good? Do we pause and look back and reflect with gratitude upon the faithfulness of God at work in our lives? Do we do that? Do we do that enough? Joshua pauses and invites the elders to reflect upon God's faithfulness throughout the long journey. And because Joshua's task is now complete and, in fact, just a few verses... For From our scripture lesson is recorded the death of Joshua. So he is rather reflective himself. So being reflective on the past, yet wishing for all the best for God's people in the future, Joshua invites the elders, and through the elders invites all of God's people to make a choice. Revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness, he instructs them. That's my desire for you, people of God. But if you can't commit to the Lord, then go back and serve the false gods and idols that your ancestors served before the covenant or the false gods that you have met along the way on this journey. Either way, make a choice this day. Now that we have arrived, now that we are no longer wandering through that wilderness, each and every one of us, Make a choice this day. Who will you serve? The God who's been so faithful throughout this long journey? Or the false but alluring gods who invite us to exchange our eternal inheritance for short-lived pleasures, which will ultimately, ultimately leave us desperate and bitter, lonely and starving? As for me and my house, Joshua says, we will serve the Lord. And though that was thousands of years ago, in a vastly different world, under a vastly different set of circumstances, that choice isn't very different from the choice the people of God today still have to make. Who will you serve? Who will we serve? Will we serve the false gods of pride and popularity? The idols of money, power, greed, status, selfishness, self-absorption? Win at all costs. Who cares who you have to step on 
to get to the top? Or do we choose to serve the Lord through sincere and faithful following of God's path, God's law, God's word, God's son? Do we seek to faithfully serve the God who's been so faithful to us by choosing the path of love and compassion, justice and joy, grace, mercy, and peace? We have that same choice before us today. Who will we serve? And we answer that by the choices we make every single day. We answer the big choice, the macro choice, through the little micro choices that we make every single day. How are we spending our time? For what? To whom are we giving our precious time? Who gets our good time, our fresh time? And who gets our garbage time? Who or what gets no time? What are we doing on our phones all the time? Where are we spending our money? Who or what gets the best of the best? And who gets what's left of the rest? How we answer the little questions is how we answer the big question. Who will we serve? That's what Joshua asks. That's what he asks in his come before winter moment. And having stopped and reflected upon how God has been so faithful throughout the journey, from the promise all the way to the promised land, the people give their answer. Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, the people say. I love that. Far be it from us. Heaven help us if we should forsake you, Lord. Bless our little hearts if we should forsake you, Lord. For you have been with us every step of the way. Through thick and thin, through good times and bad. In plenty and in want. And the highest of highs and the rock bottom lowest of lows. You have been there. Therefore, they say to Joshua, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But what about us? What choice will we make? Who will we serve. Today is August 25th. So that means that school is back. All the schools are back. Church is back. All the activities that were on a summer siesta are now back. And you know what happens next Saturday. Game on. Everything is back on. It's fall, y'all. It might be 95 degrees out there, but it is fall. Everything is back on. And so we know, we know that all sorts of events and activities and groups and clubs and institutions and traditions and scoundrels and saints alike are going to be clamoring for our time, our talents, and our treasure, for our weekends, for our calendars, for our time, for our money. And we will have to choose who we will serve. Now, 
Far be it from me to choose for you. But from where I'm standing, the choice is pretty clear. And I hope and pray that we all choose the way that Joshua chose and that his words would become our words. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
be seated. Hear now the concerns of this congregation and pray for them by name this week. We pray for God's peace and comfort for Brent Harden, Margaret Strand, and Joseph Harden upon the death of Brent's father, Larry Harden. Larry died last Sunday afternoon and a funeral was held on Thursday in Kentucky. We continue to pray for Becky Compton as she heals from her most recent eye surgery on Friday. We pray for God's peace and comfort for Amy Perkins' niece, Julia Nicholson, and her family upon the death of Julia's mother, Mary Davis. Please continue to pray for those in our congregation who are battling cancer, for Suzanne Ward, for Charlene Byers, Mark Byers' mom, for Les Kurtner, Mary Liz Kurtner Smith's brother, for Jenny Thaggard, for Fran Turner, for Jennifer Smith, for Renee Ag, for Bill Poole, and for Owen Skinner. Let us pray. God, thank you for choosing us. Because of Christ, we trust that your choice extends beyond what we could possibly imagine. We know that you are with us when we grieve, comforting us through your presence. We know that you are with us when we are anxious, giving us your peace. We know that you are with us when we have fear, giving us hope. We know that when we are broken, you bring healing. And when we cry, you cry with us. God, comfort those who grieve today. We pray for those who are hurting from the pain of losing someone they love. We pray for those who are hurting from unmet expectations. We pray for those who are hurting in anticipation of grief. Comfort us now, Lord. Jesus, give peace to those who are full of anxiety. We pray for those who are anxious about work and school, for those who are anxious about wounded relationships, for those who need peace from the struggles of everyday life. We pray for peace over the things we cannot control. Give us your peace, dear Lord. Spirit, give hope to those who are fearful. We have hope in your everlasting and unconditional love revealed to us in our Lord Jesus. But we also long for hope right now. Show us signs of your hope in the church as we navigate how we will show the world something different, how we will choose you. Show us how to be a beacon of hope while we reflect you. Give us hope, Lord. God, we pray for those who are broken. We see so much brokenness in our world and in our lives broken by hurtful words, broken by sinful choices, broken by painful pasts, violence, addiction. We are broken, Lord. Heal us. We pray for those who cry out to you in sighs too deep for words. We know that your Holy Spirit translates those sighs into prayers to you. Listen now for our petitions that we simply cannot say aloud. We conclude these prayers with the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. In gratitude for all that God gives us, let us choose generosity by giving a portion back to God with our tithes and our offerings.
as you go from this place and are forced to make choices each and every day, big ones and little ones, I encourage you to choose wisely, to choose the Lord, choose to serve the Lord with those big decisions and with those little ones. Always choose the Lord. And as you go and seek to do this, remember that you go not alone. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus walks with you every day. He goes above to protect. He goes below to support. He goes in front to guide. He goes behind to encourage. And remember that he walks beside you because above all, he loves you. Knowing this great love, let us therefore go in his name, spreading the good news until we meet again. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon and remain with you and those you love both this day and forevermore. Amen.